Every human being has a deep story, according to the late Pulitzer Prize winning writer Alex Tizan. He spent his career largely here in Seattle telling the stories of marginalized people from the hardworking but unrecognized to the eccentric, even the villains. He wrote about all of them. A new book, Invisible People, Stories of Lives at the Margins, is a collection of Tizan's most memorable work. To share stories today are Sam Halverhovic, who edited the book, and Melissa Tizan, who is Alex's widow. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. He sounds like an amazing guy. You know, a really amazing heart. Yes. He's an incredible person and an incredible writer. Absolutely. Um, Sam, the book is a compilation of Alex's writings, yeah. right? Essays and other things that Absolutely, he wrote. Yeah. How did they get chosen for the book? Um, I really, we consulted first with each other and sort of talked about what our favorites were and then um, reached out to a lot of his editors and reporting colleagues and friends and based on that, um, you know, came up with the collection. And they're not really organized chronologically, they're organized sort of thematically around mm -hmm. different kinds of people that he wrote about. And there was such a variety. Um, yes. So nobody should think it's just one category. It really is an insightful look at lives that we don't normally hear about. What was his motivation? What moved him to write these stories? Yeah, so Alex was a Filipino-American, and since a young boy moving to this country, being around primarily white people, he always felt a little bit like an outsider. And he writes about this extensively in one of his books. Um, but he, he found that when he was through reporting and by telling people other people's stories um, of people who are immigrants or who are living on the margins, that he was able to understand himself a little bit better. And Alex always believed, as you said earlier, that everyone has an epic story. Right. And it's just incredible that he was able to take people who you might just pass on the street and never even think twice about them and find their epic story and tell it, tell it in a way yeah. that really drew people in and helped us all understand each other. And we need to better. remember that because yes, everyone we pass exactly. every day, you don't know what they've been through, exactly. what they're dealing with, what their story is, and it's good to keep that in mind. The first story is a really personal story and just kind of, you get lost in this. Um, it's a little mind blowing. Would you, <laughs> would you yes. explain it? Yes. And in 20 seconds or less. <laughs> yes, please. We're talking about how difficult as possible, the story is very complicated. Yeah, it yeah. is. So, there is a story um, that, that ran in the Atlantic magazine right after Alex died, um, and it was a story about the mother, the person, the woman who raised him and his brothers and sisters. Um, who he considered a up. nanny. He, he considered type. her a grandmother. She, yeah. was, she was like a nanny type. He considered her a grandmother. We called her Lola, which is like the name, Filipino name for grandmother. Um, but what he struggled with his whole life was kind of a secret that his family had that she was not paid, that she was taken from her home in the Philippines to live with them in the United States. And she was treated very poorly by his parents. And it's something that he struggled with his whole life. And it, it wasn't until the end of his life that he really came to grips with it. And that's how the story, the story came to be. I mean, just super brave to tell the story and sort of deal with, you know, reaction. What would he have made of of the comments, the fallout, the aftermath of the storytelling. Alex loved to debate. He loved <laughs> the clash of ideas and he would have just really embraced it. Um, he would have loved to have this conversation because um, this whole idea of domestic in indentured servitude human trafficking is a problem. It touches on so many important things. Sam, yeah. your favorite. I think, favorite. by the way, that's why the book, I mean, that's one of the reasons that story stuck s such a chord. It was the most read story, not only on the Atlant in the Atlantic's history, it was the most read story on the internet that Isn't year. That by a factor of three, it just got commented on all around right. the world. I mean, there was so much to respond to, but it yeah. was also just, you know, you never get a look inside yeah. the other side of this. Sometimes yeah. with people who've been trafficked, we hear from them. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then to understand the complexities of how something yeah. like this might might come about was yeah. really incredibly yeah. great to, yeah. to see. I know you have a favorite, too, and we're going to add that to our web story because people are going to want to know more great. about this and definitely um, going to want the book. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much. Sam and Melissa will be at Elliott Bay Book Company tonight at 7. They'll be reading from invisible people to honor Alex's work and we'll put online also where you can get the book more new day after this